The Crop Zoom tool in PowerDirector 16 expands your capability for creating zooms, crops, pans, and picture-in-picture. -picture. Watch and I'll show you how this tool works. This episode is part of a series on how to edit drone video, action camera video, or any other type of video using CyberLink PowerDirector 16. If you are new to PowerDirector 16, click the link in the upper right corner of this video for the complete playlist and start learning from the first episode. Before I move on, if you want to learn more about using PowerDirector, click the little cartoon GIF on the screen right now to subscribe and click that little bell icon so you'll be notified when I post again. Also, if you want to buy PowerDirector, please use the link in the description below. If you do, CyberLink will contribute to this channel at no extra cost to you. Thanks for supporting the channel. In my last episode, I showed you how to perform zoom and picture-in-picture -picture straight from the edit screen in PowerDirector 16. If you haven't watched that episode, follow the link in the upper right corner now. If you did watch it, you were introduced to a limitation of that approach. You can zoom out to crop down to a portion of your video. You can create a basic picture-in-picture, -picture, but you can't do both. Once you pull a video down to picture-in-picture -picture size, you're going to display the full clip without cropping. There are other limitations to this technique, and over the next three videos you'll see what those are. For now, let's see what benefits we'll enjoy when we use the second technique for zooming and cropping, called Crop Zoom Tool. By the way, if you plan to zoom or crop in your videos, you need to be shooting at the highest resolution your camera or drone, and your computer, will support. I'll explain why in another video. If that video has been posted, you'll see a link in the upper right corner of the screen now. Now, I have posted a video clip taken from a Phantom 4 Pro on my timeline. When I preview, you can see the propellers interfere with a pretty large portion of the scene. This is the same problem we experienced with our first example in the last episode. Left click on the clip to make sure it's selected. Now, I'm going to click on the Tools menu, then click Power Tools from the menu, and select Crop and Zoom. Then we click on the Crop Zoom button to start. The Crop Zoom window appears. This window has the preview screen, timeline, and control buttons that you're used to seeing in the edit screen. Around the preview, you'll find those nodes you saw on the edit screen as well. To the right is a box you can use to rotate your video. Just enter how many degrees you want to rotate. Beneath that, you can choose the aspect ratio for your crop. I explained aspect ratio in the previous episode. Be sure to watch that video if you don't understand what aspect ratio is. Your choices for aspect ratio are 4 by 3, 16 by 9, 9x16 for cell phone video, and Freeform, where you can pick your own proportions. I'll choose 16x9. So, how does this Crop Zoom tool work? If you remember, when we zoomed from the edit screen, we pulled the nodes out to increase the size of the video beyond the boundaries of the viewable portion of the screen. In this tool, we accomplish the same thing by going the opposite direction. If I click and drag this node in rather than out, you will see a gray box appear over the video. As you move the node in, the box gets smaller. This box represents what will be included in the viewable area of the screen of the edited video. So, if we pull the node in, we have zoomed in on the area in this gray box and it will fill the screen in our production. In the upper right corner, there is a small version of the preview that will show how this will look. I'm going to zoom in quite a bit to eliminate all those propellers showing up in my shot. Notice that we moved the upper left node, but the screen zoomed in from all four sides and the center of the screen remained the same. I can crop out the propellers this way, but I'm also cropping out the bottom of the scene, which is something I want to keep. If we move over the center of the box, our pointer turns into a four arrow icon, and we can click and grab the box to move it around the screen. 
In this case, I'm going to move it down. So now we have cropped some from the top, left, and right sides. Again, the little window in the corner gives us a look at how our edit will appear. I can see that after moving the center down, I don't have to crop quite so much to eliminate the props. I'll grab the node and pull it out a bit. Now I have cut the props without cropping quite so much and I've recomposed my shot as well. Now if we hit OK, we can see the zoomed footage in the preview window. Those nasty propellers are gone. If I didn't crop out enough, I can go back to the crop zoom tool and adjust as I need. All that's great, but what we just accomplished with this tool is the same thing we did by zooming straight from the edit screen. So why bother with the crop zoom tool? The good news is, the Crop Zoom tool gives us additional capabilities not available from the edit screen. Here is a different video, some drone footage of a bridge. On the timeline, you can see another clip, this one showing a lagoon in a park, is beneath the bridge video. Remember, as you go down the timeline, the clips stack up. Track 2 is on top of track 1, even though it doesn't appear that way in the timeline. So all we see is the bridge video, for now at least. Now, make sure the bridge clip is selected and choose Tools, Power Tools, Crop Zoom Tool, and hit Crop Zoom. We're back to this screen. If you look at the buttons, you will see several diamond-shaped icons you may not have seen before. These buttons allow you to create and manage keyframes. Keyframes are like stop and start markers in your production. When you want to start an action, like motion, you choose a keyframe. Later, when you want that action to stop, you place another keyframe. So what does this mean to you? Up to now, when we zoomed from the edit screen, the zoom started at the beginning of the clip and stayed constant through the entire clip. Keyframes allow us to make our zoom and screen position change while the clip is being played. Here's what I mean. I'll let the bridge video play for a few seconds. Then I'll hit pause. Let's click the icon showing a diamond with a plus sign to add a keyframe. Now you see there are two keyframe markers on our timeline. A yellow one at the beginning and a red one at the point where we paused. The red means this keyframe is selected. Anything we do will take place at this keyframe or at this point in the timeline. If I wanted to jump back to the first keyframe for some reason, I could hit the icon with a diamond and an arrow left. This jumps back to our first keyframe, which is now red. I want to return to the second keyframe, so I hit the icon with an arrow right and a diamond. This advances to the next keyframe. Now, with the second keyframe selected, let's change our zoom. I want to zoom in on the bridge, so I pull in the white node to make the box smaller. I can click and drag the box to move it for better composition. OK, now I have it where I want it, so what will happen? Let's hit OK, then play, and find out. Because I used the keyframes, the video starts with the full screen displayed, and as it plays, the screen zooms in gradually until it reaches the point I chose at the second keyframe in the timeline. After that, the zooming will stop for the remainder of the video. That's a great way to add visual interest to a clip that is relatively static, isn't it? We can add more keyframes to really play with the zoom. Let's return to the Crop Zoom tool. This time, I'll drag the slider to a later point in the video clip. Let's hit the Add Keyframe button. Now we have three keyframes. With the third keyframe selected, let's move the zoom back out. I can move my selection around by holding my mouse over the blue dot in the center, then clicking and dragging it to a new position. Let's hit OK and watch.
What you see is the zoom moves into the second keyframe as before, then immediately begins a zoom back out until it reaches the third keyframe. Let's make that look a little better. Return to the Crop Zoom tool. Position the slider on the timeline between the second and third keyframes. Add a keyframe. Now, with this new keyframe selected, choose the icon with two diamonds and a plus sign to duplicate a keyframe. Then select Duplicate Previous Keyframe. Now, the settings for this new keyframe are the exact same as those for keyframe number two. What effect have we created? I'll hit OK. Let's watch. Now the video zooms in from the beginning to the second keyframe. Then it stays at that zoom until it reaches our new keyframe. Then it zooms back out to the fourth keyframe. I've got a few more things to show you about the Crop Zoom tool. Here is another copy of our bridge video with the park video hiding behind it. This doesn't have any of our changes. Now, as I alluded to before, we can use the Zoom tool not only to zoom in on a portion of the clip, we can also move what portion of the clip we're zooming in on to create a pan. Choose the bridge clip and then open Crop Zoom tool. This time, right from the first keyframe, I'm going to zoom in on the bridge. Click on the image. Now I drag the node in to zoom in. Now I'll drag the gray box to the left so it's focused on the far side of the river. I move the playhead into the middle of the clip and add a keyframe. Now I'm going to move the gray box over to the right so it's focused on a different segment of the bridge. I didn't change the scale of my zoom at all. I just panned the zoom view to the right. See this green line on screen? This shows the path that the view will travel as the video is played. Let's hit OK and watch it. Now you can see another capability the Crop Zoom tool gives you. It allows you not only to zoom, but to zoom and pan, or just to pan. There's one thing I haven't shown you how to do with the Crop Zoom tool yet, and that's how you would use it to create picture-in-picture. -picture. And that's because the Crop Zoom tool by itself has the same problem we experienced with editing directly from the edit screen. Let's return to the tool. I changed my view to 25%. Now I grab a node and drag out to zoom out so the bridge only fills a small portion of the screen. I jump ahead to the next keyframe, then select the diamond with a minus sign to delete that keyframe. Now when I choose OK and play, we can see that PIP has been created, but we've lost any of the cropping we've done. So how can we save all our zooms and pans to be displayed in a picture-in-picture -in -picture inset? We accomplish this by combining the two zoom techniques I've demonstrated in this video and the previous. You can leverage all the capabilities of the Crop Zoom tool in a picture-in-picture -picture display by combining the Crop Zoom tool with resizing in the edit screen. Let's look back at our first bridge clip. All the zooms and motions are still there. Now, I click on the timeline to exit the Power Tools menu and return to normal edit mode. I click on my bridge clip and you can see the white nodes around the edges. Just like before, I'll click and drag in one of the corner nodes and the clip resizes down to appear in only the corner of the screen. 
you can see the other video I have on the timeline behind our bridge. Let's watch. Now we have leveraged the capabilities of both methods for zooming. All the settings we chose in the Crop Zoom tool are still there, and we're able to use the edit screen to set this up as picture in picture to display two or more videos at once. Now that we've combined zooms and crops, pans and picture in picture, it's time to take our editing to the next level. PowerDirector has two more ways you can zoom, crop, pan, and produce picture in picture that have even more capabilities than I've shown here. And I'll get into the next of those techniques in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Remember, sharing is caring. If you would share this video on social media, I would really appreciate your help. On screen, you'll find a link to the complete playlist of PowerDirector 16 video editing tutorials, so please check them out. If you want more tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Before you go, be sure to hit the like button. Also, subscribe to this channel so you know when more videos are released. Next video coming soon.